It makes quite a journey from source rocks formed deep within the earth, like this shale, until finally it's processed into one of many useful products, like this jet fuel. It takes a lot of time, money, technology, and hard work to find these reserves. Get them out of the ground, treat and process them as necessary, market and then deliver them to the customer, and also make a profit all along the way. For the next few minutes, we're going to take a little journey of our own and follow this process step by step from the formation of hydrocarbons until the product is ready for sale. This overview of the oil industry will have five sections. First, we'll get some background information about petroleum geology. Then we'll look at exploration, followed by drilling, production, and finally oil and gas marketing. So if you're ready, let's get started. As I mentioned earlier, our first section sets the stage for everything else. In it, we will learn about the origin of oil and gas, as well as some basics of petroleum geology. Our first presenter, Brian Borg, is near the DeGray Spillway in Arkansas. Let's join him there now. Modern geology is based on the theory that the present is the key to the past. In other words, the processes changing and acting upon the earth today, such as erosion caused by wind and water, are the same forces which changed and acted upon the earth in the past. Geologic evidence of marine organisms located in some of the highest mountains and in the deepest wells indicates that sedimentary rocks and organisms were deposited in shallow seas and then over millions of years of geologic activity, rose or fell to their present positions. So, oil, gas, and coal, commonly called fossil fuels, were formed from this organic material, which underwent chemical changes in the earth. And that is the job facing exploration personnel around the world. For a look into this subject, let's join Greg Loso. Believe it or not, an important part of exploration is happening here, in this room. That's because modern exploration techniques rely very heavily on computers to process, filter, enhance, manipulate, and display information. The petroleum geologist studies information gathered from direct observation or measurement of rock properties. The cores and shavings taken from previously drilled wells are studied to determine if the rocks are likely to be of source and reservoir quality. Before any drilling begins, the drilling engineer evaluates offset well data and geologic data about the area of the proposed well site. A well design is then recommended, which will allow the well to be drilled in the most economical and safe manner. Drilling, evaluation, and completion costs are also estimated, so the economics of the proposed project can be evaluated. Now, based upon favorable economic results, management approval is then obtained. The drilling department then files the required governmental permits, arranges for well site construction, determines equipment requirements, and directs all associated operations. After the exact location has been selected by geologic or engineering personnel, the drill site is surveyed and then carefully prepared. But whatever the location, climate, or type of drilling rig, the ultimate goal of the drilling operation is the same, to penetrate the oil and gas bearing formation and begin the initial flow of well fluids up to the surface. The void created near the well bore creates an area of reduced pressure which in turn causes fluids in the remainder of the reservoir to flow towards the area of reduced pressure at the well bore. As the well matures, the pressure differential becomes smaller and the oil flow gradually decreases. This is where artificial lift becomes a tool to assist in getting the oil into and up the well bore and then to the surface. Now the selection of this type of artificial lift mechanism for a particular reservoir depends upon several factors, such as the rate of flow, the amount of produced water, the viscosity of the oil, and the amount of sand or sediments in the well stream. One way or another, all artificial lift methods reduce the pressure within the well bore, 
increasing the pressure differential to draw additional fluid into the well. Now, the most common method of artificial lift is rod pumping. The use of a rod pump, called beam pumping, applies an up and down motion to a string of steel rods attached to a plunger or piston submersed in the well fluid. The familiar rocking horse action lifts the fluids to the surface. For more on oil and gas marketing, let's join Lou Michaels at a pipeline distribution center in Cushing, Oklahoma. <laughs> Exploration, drilling, and production expenses are all an investment which must be recovered at the point of sale. And in many cases, the point of sale is here. This distribution center is where crude is routed to customers all over the country. Our basic objective in natural gas marketing is to satisfy customer wants and needs with natural gas products and services. Of course, uh, at the same time, we, we want to try to earn a profit for the company. But before 1985, natural gas transmission companies were the basic customers of natural gas producers uh, and gas marketing organizations. And what This is the port of Valdez, Alaska. It is also the end of the Trans-Alaska pipeline system, a point where over two million barrels a day of crude oil flow into tankers like this one. Here in a terminals like this all over the world, raw petroleum is loaded for movement to refineries. Consequently, the seemingly simple process of moving crude oil in large quantities at an economic rate becomes a logistical juggling act. For example, to get crude oil from Alaska to a Gulf Coast refinery, one of two alternatives is used. The crude is offloaded in Los Angeles and then piped to a Gulf Coast refinery, or the oil is taken to Panama and run through the pipeline that parallels the canal. Smaller tankers at the other end will receive the crude oil and deliver it to the Gulf Coast refinery for processing. Now all of this takes place in an atmosphere of government regulation. The fundamental legislation governing these ships is called the Jones Act. For a closer look at refining, here's Greg Loso. Thanks, John. The goal of a refinery like this one is to convert crude oil into saleable products. Things like gasoline, diesel and jet fuel. They do that through a variety of processes, some of which we'll examine over the next few minutes. When crude first arrives at the refinery, it's stored in a group of tanks, referred to in the industry as a tank farm. This is where the working inventory is kept. The first step in converting crude oil into usable products is called atmospheric distillation. And this is essentially a process that separates crude oil fractions by boiling points. This fractionating process operates at about 20 pounds per square inch above atmospheric pressure, which is relatively low. There are different types of cracking processes, such as catalytic cracking and hydro cracking. And the group responsible for selling it all? Marketing. Here's Lisa Gibbons. Marketing refined petroleum products is a broad-based task requiring numerous functions and diverse responsibilities. Let's take some time now to see how a marketing department is usually organized. Typically there are three target customer groups, industrial, retail, and reseller. Each has its own unique demands and considerations. Industrial marketing sells a wide variety of products ranging from natural gas liquids to petroleum coke. These products are marketed to various industrial, commercial, and governmental customers. For example, jet fuel is sold to commercial airlines as well as to the military. Retail marketing involves selling gasoline and diesel fuel to the public. It's the most visible branch of marketing, the one that displays the corporate logo and communicates the company image. Or say there's a sudden unexpected demand for gasoline because a competitor's refinery is out of action. You talk about scrambling. These are the kinds of real life situations that do occur and must be met. So the coordination of refining and marketing's efforts is one of those intangibles in an organization that can make an enormous difference to the bottom line.